know, this panel specifically, I thought it's, it's, it's interesting because, um, you know, we, we have been busy defining or trying to define or describe smart cities. But I think what's even more interesting is the Internet of Things because uh, if someone was to ask me, I'd probably flounder and try to explain what it's all about without really grasping uh, the impact that it's going to have on our lives and without really grasping the kind of possibilities that it offers us today. Uh, for, for this panel, I'd actually like to start with Vishal and ask him to maybe give us an overview and, you know, just, it, it's, a, it's a buzzword these days, everyone's talking about IoT, we're talking about connected things, there are lots of reports coming out as to how much they're going to, you know, how much they'll be worth and how much will the market be worth. What really is the Internet of Things? Thank you. The Internet of Things is a phrase that's, that's developed around new types of technologies that we will ingratiate or predicted to ingratiate in our lives over a period of time. Let me explain what that, what that means. Um, it took three decades or two decades of consumerization of computing devices to become commonplace. So today, um, somebody was talking about mobile telephony here and how smartphones have become the norm, um, or if you look at computer devices. But the, so far, it's reached around two and a half billion uh, installed computing devices. With Internet of Things, the projection by 2020 is 26 billion devices. These are various types of technologies that could be a sensor in your home, something that actually helps you with LPG, wearables that are help you with, uh, with determining whether your health vi vitals are, are in sync, uh, security cameras, um, panic buttons that will help you in determining if you're in any kind of problem and you need some, somebody to, to bail you out. It's uh, various types of technologies. And I think what, what we've seen over the years, my company, Ayogi, we support around 3 million homes globally. We've seen a signature of technology that's changed. So from people who had one PC, one phone, to an average household that has over 12 devices. That signature will continue to expand as devices become more commonplace, um, they become easier to access, they become cheaper. They integrate with everything else, so they become easier to use. They, people see more purpose from it, and there's, it's more beneficial. So Internet of Things as is a phrase. It basically lends itself to any kind of technology which is outside the traditional computing sphere, which is computers, smartphones, tablets, and, and will enable or make our lives better as we go forward. Thanks. Thanks so much, Vishal. I'd um, like to now um, ask Dr. Ketkar, what are some of the uses in terms of using all of that information, all of that connected information? You know, we could probably talk about one or two ideas that Dr. Ketkar had in uh, take it from there. Thank you. Physical, digital and human systems getting integrated with two objectives. One objective is sustained economic development. And the second thing that we are talking about is better living standards or better quality of life. Now, in this area, uh, we were talking about uh, use of ICT in general, but I am looking at use of mobiles in particular because mobile phones have a penetration in excess of 100% in urban areas. And this is where mobiles can be a game changer in sort of bringing in transparency in the whole working of the government and in improving delivery of services to citizens. Application, which is again very simple. Uh, all of us are familiar with uh, using our uh, de debit card or a credit card on the net. Now banks are sending us a password to our mobile phone and we are required to enter that one-time password to complete the transaction. So mobile phones are getting used for verification of who's actually making the transaction in a situation of card not present, right? Because the physical card is not present at uh, the transaction place, the verification is done by using a uh, one-time password sent to the mobile phone. Now, something similar could be done when uh, people are visiting government offices. Right? When a person makes a visit to some government office, he is required to get a gate pass from the reception desk. Normally, we give our name and address. Current system of entering that in a register, which nobody can decipher, uh, has to change. In smart cities, we need computer uh, aided gate pass generation where person's name and address is entered 
and also his telephone number or the mobile number is captured. Once you have entered the mobile number into the computer system, it should automatically generate a maybe six digit code which is sent to the mobile number and the visitor should be asked to give that code to the reception desk and only after entering or confirming that pin code does the gate pass get printed right if you can have that kind of a security built in you are creating a record or creating a trail of who all have visited that government office which phones were carried by them and there can't be any dispute on who visited at what time and what date right such kind of tracking would help in sort of analyzing later and you know making the system more transparent right well, thank you so much dr ketkar i uh, you did mention in the end uh, i words especially like access and also when we are talking about security we also talking physical security and connecting that to also what vishal said earlier i'd like to bring in mr avuja here to tell us a little bit about what asa abloy also does and also um, to explain one part of the opportunity that we have with uh, you know now devices and and our lives becoming so interconnected when the smart cities become a reality is going to happen we are already doing a lot of stuff in this area to build our smarter homes our smarter services etc just to give you a few a couple of examples in which uh, a lot of uh, stuff is becoming much smarter today for instance we are now uh, working with an, a very big oil company in india to provide um, uh, solutions to their trucks which carry oil from the their you know petrol uh, tanker uh, stations to all the petrol bunks there used to be a lot of thefts of those oil tankers now we have created a global positioning system based technology which enables them to um, through through the uh, through the web to access the locks on their trucks so that nobody can open those trucks uh, while they are in transit so those are the smart solutions we are bringing to the table and those are very very important areas to to become uh, smarter uh, cities right and also preeti talked about uh, homes becoming smarter today uh, at least in my home i have locks which i can access through the web and uh, which open at the touch of a button through my ipad or my phone i can get mobile keys the way i want to it's fingerprint as bio biometric and i don't need any more keys so these are the some of the technologies we are talking about uh, through our company and through our business which make our homes our cities our services much more smarter right and and lastly i feel that if you take some examples from uh, countries like korea where and australia where the the um, which are much smarter in terms of the way they approach their security needs in more area more areas than one they are they have embraced technology and the smarter technologies in a much much faster way for instance uh, to give you an example in in korea uh, the uh, almost 90% of the homes in korea have key free locks they all use digital door locks nobody uses a mechanical key in those in those countries and now it's just a matter of time with all the security needs on these locks and homes get somewhere embedded in the world wide web which will lead to far better security in these cities and hence these cities must become much much smarter right so that's the vision for the future for us as well thank you so much uh, in fact um, now is a good time to go outside because we've talked about you know um uh, security indoors staying indoors locking the things that are inside but for people like me who actually forget passwords i feel it's like a new nightmare altogether